Hey everyone, welcome to video 1 in a part 3 series of functors, applicatives, and monads in Haskell. This video will be all about functors, so let's begin. I'm just going to start off by writing the definition here, and then we're going to work our th way through it, and it'll make sense by the end. So firstly, a functor is a type class. Now what is a type class? A type class, you can think of it as an interface. It's not really an interface, but you can think of it as an interface. So what that means is that the functor is a type class and it defines or it gives us a signature for a method and we have to implement that method on our own. So this is what it looks like in Haskell. So we're going to do class functor f where fmap. fmap is the function that it gives us a signature for to be f a f b so this is exactly what it looks like and i'm going to explain how this works so in haskell we have something called a wrapped value and we have something called an unwrapped value what is a wrapped value well sorry what is an unwrapped value an unwrapped value is basically just a value on its own for example let's say i had plus 3 applied to something like 9 the 9 here is an unwrapped value because it's not surrounded by anything. A wrapped value is something that is surrounded by something. The obvious case here is an example that might come to your head is in maybe. So in Haskell, we have this maybe object, which is basically just a or nothing, right? So in this case, what we have, let's say if I do just 8, we consider or we say that the 8 is wrapped in a just. And I think this photo here illustrates it the best that we have an A inside and then it's wrapped around. It's wrapped around by something. If I wanted to apply a function to this just 8, how would I do it? I can't do this, can I? It won't work. I can do plus 3, 9 to unwrapped value. But to a wrapped value, it doesn't matter what, to a wrapped value, it does not work. And that's where the functor comes into play. A functor, essentially what it does, it takes in a function. So here's how we would call it. We'll call fmap. We'll call some sort of function. So let's say plus 3. And we'd pass in our f of a. So maybe this is like a wrapped value. And then what it should give us in the end is just 7. So it gives us the wrapped value back where the function here has been applied to this internal variable. So let's exactly see how we're going to make that happen in maybe. So I'm going to define maybe2 here, identical to maybe. And as you can see, so and just to 8. And obviously, I have to derive show in order for it to show. So if I do just to 8, as you can see, it's here. I'm going to apply this functor to maybe2. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to write instance functor maybe two where so remember we have to code this fmap function which is what Haskell defines fmap now we have to code the two cases so function just to a is equal to and fmap function nothing is equal to and if you're wondering why is this function here well this is our function right over here a to b this just a is our f of a, and we're going to return an f of b. Well, the easy case here is that if I pass in nothing, or if I'm getting in nothing, then regardless of the function I apply, I should get back nothing. That makes sense. If I have a just, and I'm applying a function, then I want to apply the function to the internal value, which is a, and then I want to wrap it around in a just. So this is how it is. This is how easy it works. So if I were to do it again, now let me do something like fmap. The function here is plus 3, and I'm going to do just to 8. Now you're going to see it gives me just to 11. And something about Haskell is that it already defines it for a bunch of stuff. A bunch of data types, it already defines the functor method. For example, the regular just, it's already defined. So if I was to do just 8... It's already defined right over there. It's also defined in list. It's also defined in either. 
So in a list, it actually becomes very easy because in a list, if I was to do f map, let me do plus three, one two three, well we get four five six. The reason here is that f map in the list is actually equal to just map, right? Because if I was to do map plus three one two three, I would get back the same exact thing. So that's what a functor is. A functor, basically, what it does is it applies a function to a wrapped value and gives us a wrapped value back. So functors, when you're going to be using them, they're going to be very. It's going to be very tedious to keep writing f map f map every time. So Haskell offers an infix notation. Infix basically means in between, and essentially what you do is we have our function. Then it's the angle brace the dollar sign, angle brace again, and then the item, or the wrapped value, and then we're going to get the same thing back. So this, this thing here, it's identical to saying fmap plus 3, just 2, 4. It's identical to saying that. It's just in Haskell, it's easier if you have an infix notation just like this. So we know that Haskell offers the functors for maybe either lists and a bunch of other stuff. But most of the time, you want to apply functors to your own programs or your own data structures. So the most common example is a tree. And the tree, how we're going to define it is the following way. So we're just going to have data tree. A is equal to, so it's going to have a tip. And it's going to be a branch. So in branch, we'll have tree A and tree A. So I'll show you an example of what this might look like. Something like this. So here's a tree, the 4, 5, and 6 are tips, and these individual things right over here are the branches. So this would be something like this, branch, tip 4, and then branch, tip 5, and then tip 6. This is what it will look like. When we apply fmap to it, we apply it at the tips, and this is our resulting tree. So this is an example that is not implemented by Haskell, and we're going to implement it right now. So again, we do it the same way. So we'll do instance functor tree where again we have two cases so we have fmap function we're gonna have a tip a we're gonna have fmap function we're gonna have branch left and then right well the tip a is easy because all we need to do here is apply the function so function at a and surrounded by a tip the branch so the branch is different because Again, we still need to surround it by a branch as per the type construct, but what will be the two things right over here? Well, we know that in a branch, if it's a left and if it's a right, we can't apply the function, we can't apply fmap just yet, because it needs to go all the way down to a tip. So what we're going to do is we're going to recurse, and how we're going to recurse is fmap f left and fmap f right. And we could have again wrote fmap f right as f infix operator right, just to save space. But I think it's much clearer this way. So this is a pattern you're gonna see. When you're at your most basic case, you just apply the function. Otherwise, you're gonna recurse. So that's this. So let's just take a look at it. Uh, we got a bunch of errors. F. This should be function. Function. Right, and that should work. So, let me just put deriving show here so I can show you an example. Actually, I'll just I'll just copy and paste this. So let's say x is equal to the following. So x is equal to the following. Let's clear. And then what I want to do is I want to apply fmap. Let's do plus three to x. And as you can see, it works properly. Originally, x was this, and it has applied three to each and every one of them. So I know this video was kind of long, but it was basically just to lay out what a functor is and how we're going to use it. So we showed an example of where it's already used and then created our own example to show how we can use it in our own programs. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.